Now I'm starting with bag N for this one. Uh, so bag N, uh, we will have uh, everything that we need for mounting the servo and electronics, it seems. Uh, it's the whole right side. So we will go ahead and do this and just open up the bag. So we do have an antenna tube here, which is way too long. Uh, Many kids include these antenna tubes that are incredibly long. Uh, they're probably about 40 centimeters in length. And I wonder why. The reason why I say I wonder why is there's really no reason for receivers to have such long uh, antenna tubes nowadays. A long time ago, perhaps. Well, no, yes, back then, yes. Uh, back when we were using AM and FM uh, transmitters. But now, uh, we do not need such long antenna tubes. So I'm curious as to why they supply such a long antenna tube. I mean, somebody that's still using an FM AM, you know, may want to consider uh, updating uh, your electronics in your vehicle. Or perhaps there is a reason why people still use AM and FM systems. Uh, if there's a reason, or if you're somebody that still uses one, uh, why is it? I am curious to know. All right, so I'm just snipping everything off. Uh, one of the things that I do like about these boxes is these holes here on top, those three, that's where you can mount a uh, transponder, and my laps fits right on. Uh, something that generally you also need is a little bit of CA glue. Uh, there's going to be some O-rings that are going to go in here, uh, more than likely, or maybe over here, right in there. Uh, that, that's the way the SCT is, so I'm sure this one will be similar. It's not just the SET. Uh, I used to have an EB48. Uh, I forget which one. I don't remember if it was a 0 0.2 or 0 0.3. 0 0.2 perhaps. Uh, similar system. There we go. All right. We will place these here. And there we go. Now, do you have the servo over here? This is a servo that's going to go in it. It's an EcoPower WP120T. Uh, and uh, this stuff in here, we are going to be using none of it except for a screw, but I think we actually end up using one of these screws. I don't see a single screw here that would fit. Uh, but this is it. So we have our servo. And just in case you haven't been following the whole build, uh, the servo is uh, pretty quick. So 60 degrees in 0 0.09 seconds. And then uh, the torque is also pretty high on this particular model. It's over 300 ounce inches uh, for this one. That's uh, six volts, I believe. Uh, well, it's right here, let's see. Uh, 337 ounce inches, six volts, uh, 400 at 7.4. So that would be six volts, 24.4 kilograms per centimeter or 28.8 kilograms per centimeter at 7.4. All right, great. So that being said, I'm gonna transfer this over here. And uh, one of the things that we need to do is line this up. So the servo is going to go in here. Uh, there's usually this pocket. That's pretty normal. And the way this generally works is we have this aluminum piece here. And this will sit right here, just like that. Uh, so you want to make sure you orient that that way. This goes like this. This will go in here. Now, on one side you will be using this. 
So this plastic bit, this is what's going to secure the servo uh, to this aluminum piece right in here. And the reason why is uh, you're going to be using one, two, three, four to mount this whole thing onto this plate. Uh, so these two are going to be attached via this. Uh, so that being said, we're going to use these. It's usually these longer ones and it is uh, so I'm going to set one. There we go. All right, so now that I have started this, we'll go into the next one. Go. And I'm just going to hold it here while I tighten this all the way. I've never actually used one of these servos on one of my vehicles. Uh, so this will be interesting for me to see how this servo does on this particular truck. Uh, so I'm going to be following through. Uh, one thing that I did forget, I forgot the washers. Let me go ahead and take this out. Yeah, my friend uses a variety of servos. Uh, some of them uh, I have never used in my personal vehicles. Well, I guess it would be most of them. I, I generally stick to uh, Savox. Uh, they work. I have met people that do not like Savox. Uh, for example, I was at, I believe it's Honest Hobbies in Las Vegas or near Las Vegas. And uh, one of the employees that I was talking to just hated Savox with a passion. Uh, he, uh, he, he mentioned a lot of his experiences and why he didn't like Savox. Uh, I have not had the same experiences. One of them was, for example, customer service. Uh, they would not uh, honor the warranty on one of the servos. Uh, again, I have not experienced that because I, I have not yet had one uh, fail on me. Uh, so that that's one of the reasons why I have not had that experience. I have not have to... Never have I dealt with their customer service, uh, for example. Uh, but uh, Tegan, for example, that's another brand uh, he wasn't too fond of, but I've had good experiences with uh, Tegan, so I guess it just depends. I mean, Tegan, if you, I don't know why I put the screw back on without the washer, getting distracted with my stories. Uh, Tegan, actually, if you've seen some of my other videos, I, one of my trucks fell into a river and the systems are not advertised as waterproof, but it still works. Uh, and that's the truck I generally run in 4S and the system still works. It's an RX-8 ESC uh, and the motor is their T8, forget the KB, uh, 2650, 2650 KV motor. And it still runs, even after being submerged in a river. That was uh, quite scary, I'll say. Second there, thought I had lost that truck, but nope, managed to find it. Uh, so if you haven't seen those videos, those are the ones I titled uh, Gone Fishing. So it'll be SET 410.3 Gone Fishing. Uh, I wish my cameraman had recorded the entire thing as it fell. Uh, it would have been a lot better, but yeah, yeah, it's still there. You can see which truck it is. All right. And this will key in, so there in the plastic. Uh, so it just sits in there, and this will be toward the inside. And now you just drive the other four screws. Uh, let me see how many washers I have, too, so they probably go on the servo. 
They do. All right, so I will only have washers on the servo. Here we go. All right. Here we go. And we'll put this over here. Uh, I'm gonna leave that little plastic there. It still has that blue protective film. Uh, my friends can go ahead and remove it. Uh, I'll just leave it there. That way you can see that it's new. <laughs> of course he knows it's new, he bought it. Uh, there we go. So like I said, if, if there's something that you like or you're curious, uh, you can look at reviews but some of them, if, if you get an overwhelmingly amount of reviews that say something, all right, consider it. Uh, but if you get two or three that are bad reviews or only two or three that are good, you know, take them with a grain of salt. And the reason why I say that is, like I said, uh, that particular individual did, was not a fan of electronics that I'm a fan of. Uh, but you know, everybody has different experiences. Maybe that individual got bad batches or maybe it was that one case of uh, warranty. The only company that I have experience with warranty is Castle Creations. Uh, so Castle Creations, I did have an ESC that fried uh, due to ripple voltage, sent it to Castle. It took forever, not really their fault, just given the time situations, everything, manufacturing, uh, it just wasn't available for a long period of time. But eventually they got me a replacement. Uh, so, you know, warranty is pretty good. The only thing is, first of all, send you an invoice. So it kind of freaks you out. Uh, but they send you the invoice on purpose so that uh, you call them so they can explain what happened. And then after that, uh, they'll just ship you a new one. But at first they'll give you a good old fright. And then after that fright, they will just honor the warranty. At least that's the way I interpret it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip this now. Uh, and I'm already trying to attach this, but I'm not supposed to. Uh, I need to go ahead and attach uh, the ESC. And the only way to attach the ESC is to place these O-rings. So these O-rings go in these little pockets. Uh, you can just put a little bit of CA glue uh, in, in the little pockets just to glue the O-rings on. Uh, that way they do not fall. And uh, that is something that I would recommend. And uh, that's something that uh, I did on the SET. Uh, but that's just because it makes it easy to remove the electronics, but you don't have to. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do it this way. Um, I'm sure my friend wouldn't mind if I, if I did it. But let's see, but I'm gonna do it this way. Uh, the other thing too is keep in mind if you do put CA glue on rubber, uh, it makes it hard, so it loses its elasticity. And that's why I'm not doing it without asking him. All right, and these definitely do not over tighten. And those O-rings are important. They're not sealing anything. They are just a cushion. Think about them as a cushion for your ESC. Uh, that's what they are. And so that will go there. All right. So now that that is there, the ESC is just going to tape on here. I'm gonna worry about the ESC 
later, right now, I actually want to go ahead and install this here. And now that I know where it goes, I'm going to go ahead and place the other O-ring here, that little place. So if you see this little L, O-ring will go right in here. And that is it. Now here, I would not put the CA glue on the aluminum chassis. I would put it on the plastic uh, if I were to use CA glue. It, it glues better to plastic than the aluminum, in my point of view, but uh, let's see. Uh, this is sometimes the challenge when you don't glue it, but not a big deal there. All right, uh, let's see. Now for the screws. Oh, I need a different bag for that. Great. Uh, so I'm gonna need bag eight. Uh, oh, I didn't realize it was a different bag. Uh, not a big deal, not a big deal. I'm just gonna move this over here, move these off, and these will correspond to this. And I'm going to go ahead and just open bag O. We'll see how I manage. I didn't wanna let go of this, uh, but here we go. This is the other side. Now, I am not going to use these servo horns because these are plastic. Don't bother, don't waste your time. Uh, they will break, I'm not gonna say immediately, but in that same run, that first battery, you will probably break them. All right, here it is. Put the bags. And this is going to be part of the steering. And here we have this, which is part of the motor mount. All right, so the screws that I want, I'm sure, are going to be there. Uh, let's see. So for these, I'm going to be using 43s and the 22s in the back. So three of the 43s, and those are the ones I'm concerned about right now. So the 43s are these medium ones, which are over here. It's these right here. So one, two, three, perfect. Just going to stand them up right here. I'll go ahead and work them. Uh, two millimeters, interesting. So no, no, it was a 2.5. What did I do wrong? Ah, that's what I did wrong. All right. Let's try to hold this and see if we kept it in the correct spot. It appears that I have. Wait, that's not it. Oh, this one. All right. Because it's the front three that use these. This one. That one I did thread all the way through. And one over here for the o-ring that's a 22 and the 22 is a thinner screw uh, which is that one so it'd be these over here it's a smaller one for this one i do need the two millimeter all right let's check ah i see the problem it's the o-ring Oh, not a big deal. Just going to use the smaller driver to move it and adjust. And that looks good to me. So I hope. Uh, this video gives you an idea of uh, the steps to take. And, um, you know, it's really not that difficult to assemble trucks, you know, as I'm struggling here to make this one work. 
uh, once in a while you will have a few little hiccups similar to this but most of the time everything goes smoothly as long as you do not lose parts that is generally what will set you back because then you have to order the parts you generally only get uh, the precise amount of parts needed for a build and that is it so if you lose a part well good luck hopefully you have a spare now uh, some of the parts that I do have extras and I've never used for my SATs are uh, shocks. I actually have an entire set of shocks. I just bought front and rear dampers in case I ever bent any. And that was mainly because of my experience with uh, some other brand of vehicles uh, where I would bend the shafts, but uh, I've not had a problem yet with them, which is a really good thing. And considering how much I've, I've used the truck, uh, that's a really good thing. But keep in mind that uh, maintenance does go a long way. It's usually lack of maintenance that will destroy your vehicle. Well, I guess if it gets run over, that, that's, that will also destroy your vehicle, but that's different. So one of the things that I did do here, and I did it on purpose, is uh, I actually placed this screw first. So this was in, this was in, I placed this one and then this one. The reason why it's easier to put a middle, middle screw in, because this flexes, uh, but now there's less flex. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and put this one and then I'll put that one in. That's the only reason why. If you wanna put them in order, you know, go for it. Knock yourself out. Uh, I mean, not so much. I just want to build this in a manner that I think will make my life easier. Right, so this is the reason why. So I skipped that one, I went from here, and then I'm going here. Keep in mind that this is just a plastic on aluminum. This isn't a, uh, like a head, an engine head, where you have to follow a certain pattern. I mean, you would never do this in an engine head because then you'd probably develop a leak here uh, you'd lose compression or, I don't know, water would leak into your oil system or some bad thing. So you'd actually follow a straight line. But here, it's not crucial. All right, so this side set, we just need those two. Uh, and those two are right over here. And go ahead and place them. And uh, something that I will tell you is uh, the chassis is this beautiful black color. It's not going to last. So just keep that in mind. You can get a chassis protector, those uh, thick vinyl protectors that uh, stick on. Uh, they, they work, uh, but you're going to tear those up too. So just keep in mind it doesn't. Something else that you could do, uh, I did it once on an HPI that I used to have. That was a long time, that was 18 years ago. I guess it's not that long. There's people that have had uh, RCs that still run for longer than that. I mean, I still have my very first RC from when I was five. Uh, but uh, you can always sand this lightly. And I say that lightly, you don't want to remove too much material. And then it'll just be silver, so any scratches will sort of blend in. Uh, that's something that you could do. Uh, all right, so this part here is set, so I've built that one in. I'm gonna work with the battery. Now, uh, something here, uh, this here, this is something I do like about Techno. Uh, my friend was not aware that Techno comes with Velcro straps or this Velcro style. So he actually bought this uh, Pure Tech and he has used this on other vehicles. I've actually installed this on uh, another one of his vehicle and these things work great. Uh, he has some 5S packs, which are heavy. Uh, there's some 6S packs that are just as heavy, and it holds them well, uh, very well. Uh, the nice thing about these is because you are Velcroing the battery, uh, 
It's mainly on Traxxas slash two wheel drive and four wheel drive. It holds the battery on well because if you're bashing hard with them, uh, sometimes what ends up happening if it's the two wheel drive, that pin uh, on the battery strap will fall out somehow and then the battery tie will just fly out and then your battery just shoots out of the truck and then you destroy a battery. That has happened to me before. Um, then the four wheel drive, that one has a battery tie similar to a Fortec if you're not familiar with it. Uh, I have one right over here. This is the car that I'm gonna be working on. I have to clean and everything, but it has one of these. These will also open up. I mean, if you, well, I'm not gonna try it here. I don't wanna drop the screws, but you can lose batteries. And if they're not hard case batteries, like many Traxxas brand batteries, you will lose them. You will hit them, damage them, and then they'll start to swell up and they'll just puff up. So that's something to keep in mind. So this is a good upgrade for many RC vehicles. Uh, but Traxxas comes with them. So the long strap is just gonna go over here. Now I'm gonna go all the way uh, to the ends because he already told me he's planning on uh, going 6S on this thing. So I, I already know what's gonna happen. Uh, it's, it's called fun. That's what's gonna happen, fun. Uh, so here, I'm just going to run it through here and then I'm going to run it right over here and that is it. Uh, so depending on the battery, that's where you want to place this. Now later on, even once it's installed, you can adjust this, but I'm going to leave it here. And the reason why I'm leaving it right about there is if he decides to do 2S, I doubt it, uh, it will hold, right, once he pulls on this. Uh, actually, no, it won't. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go all the way over here. Uh, so if he goes 2S, or right, Velcro there, change my mind. And then if he goes with something bigger, it'll hold here. So I'm actually gonna leave it right about there. And then if he needs to pull it on either side, it will work. Uh, and these, I'm gonna do something similar now, if you look at the diagram, this diagram here, uh, one of the things to note is I did install this uh, backwards uh, to what they have it there. Uh, I don't mind uh, doing it this way. I actually prefer this way rather than that way. And the reason why is to Velcro away from the gear in the transmission. Uh, so this will sit this way and if you have a smaller battery you may end up with some slack I just don't want this to be close to the battery so that's why I want to velcro away that's the reason why I'm installing it in the opposite direction just to stay away from that gear uh, now with these over here I will be installing them in the same way actually again in reverse so I will install them this way. And the reason why is in the diagram, they have you installed them in the opposite direction. So that when you Velcro, the Velcro is gonna to be toward the center of the vehicle. I don't want it toward the center of the vehicle because then it's going to be rubbing on the shaft. And you'll see that uh, even though this is a, a synthetic material, it's abrasive enough to where it's gonna start uh, rubbing on the shaft and taking the color away. Actually, did I do this backwards? I did this backwards. Certainly did this backwards. I, I installed it. I was looking at the diagram and I did what the diagram was telling me to do instead of what I was saying I was going to do. Uh, all right, so we will be going this way and this way. So the Velcro, this will be out of the vehicle. That's the reason why. So once this is there, and it goes to Velcro this, this is away from the center shaft. That's the reason why. So I am reversing the way these are installed. All 
That's the reason why. So these just slide in. They're pretty simple. And there we go. And that's it. Uh, now it's just six, six screws. And let's go ahead and take some of that slack away. And this just sits in here. Uh, you will need thread lock for the six screws in here uh, because they actually uh, screw onto the chassis. Not these here, which uh, I'm actually going to do these six first. And those six should be these short ones over here. And yes, they are. I'm going to use a little bit of thread lock. Got lucky on that one. The little drop fell, or fell on another screw. So I'm going to do it here off to the side. That's too much. Take some of the excess. All right. Perfect. And let's see. All right, so two more. Here on top and then the two on the bottom. And then I'll move over to the electronics. Maybe I'll do the electronics on. The next one we'll see. We shall see. Although there's no soldering on these electronics. All right, there we go. So I get to flip this. I get to install these two and those two should be, these look a little too big, but maybe it is these large ones. Uh, let's see. Yeah, these shouldn't go to the motor mount. These probably go to this. Let's see. All right, so we are here. No, that's the wrong one. Where is it? Ah, there we go. Okay, so the 43. Uh, 43, all right, it is the small ones. So here they are. So it's these short ones. Actually, I'm going to do the rear first. All right. all there perfect and this wire I'm gonna run over here I could have run this underneath that would have been better uh, I can still do it not a big deal just need to push the water the the wire in that is it like it will tuck in neatly All right, so all I did was just kind of tuck in the wire. Uh, but before you install this, you can actually run the wire underneath this, but it's plenty long. I would not worry about it. Uh, so at this point, uh, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to grab another shop towel and I need to apply some alcohol. This will just cut a piece. Just clean that little area. 
Wait, how big is the ESC? Oh, this is a massive ESC. Uh-oh. Uh, shoot. Uh, I don't want to give them any bad news. I want to give them bad news. This doesn't fit. All right. Well, maybe I'll continue with the, uh, the rest of the build. And, uh, well, this, uh, I'll continue that later. Uh, so now, just to let you know, all, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the receiver, clean this, clean that with just rubbing alcohol, clean the receiver. I'm going to use uh, this 3M, the red stuff, not the blue stuff. This is, oh, there we go. Now it's separated. And I'm just going to use some of this tape to tape everything on. Uh, so other than that, uh, I'm going to, well, I guess I might as well finish this part. Uh, this is the steering part since I have the servo. Uh, all right. So this arm, We're going to need a 1.5 and on one side you can stick this in and I'm just going to drive this through usually you drive about half of it in uh, so the, these parts they're they usually go uh, they generally touch each other the plastic on one side versus the plastic on the other if you don't drive it all the way in, it's it's all right as you drive most of that half. Because then as soon as you put this one, you start tightening. Uh, it'll tighten to wherever it is uh, looser. So it'll work out. I'm just going to use two drivers. stop right there for now all right so we have this now for the motor let me go ahead and show you what's going to happen so you have these right here it's flat on one side and then concave on the other Con concave goes toward the head of the screw it'll go like this all right so i'll place that there and then we have this other one these are for your motor mounts so this will go here and these, uh, this will actually just go in here and it'll slide it right there. And this, you will put a little bit of thread lock and then uh, you just slide that in and then the other one just goes in through the bottom. So that being said, oh, my friend's gonna want me to install this, so I guess I might as well just do it. Uh, if you have these two cutouts here, this is for your pinion gear. That's so you can adjust your pinion gear. And uh, they are mirror images, so it's not going to matter which way uh, you install this, uh, which makes things easier. So I'm just going to place it. Keep in mind that this will go in an angle, so when you install it, uh, let's see, where are the holes? There they are. All right. When you install it, just think of where you want the wires to go, because this will be sort of at an angle. So if I place it on the camera, this will slide in like this, so the wires will be there. If I install it here, the wires will be closer to the center. Uh, I'm going to keep them farther from the center. I will go ahead and install them here. All right. Uh, so that's where they're going to go. And you're going to be using these here. So if we look at the motor, it doesn't give you the screws or tell you what screws to go. Let me just go ahead and place this over here. This over here. Unless I have to get some other screws. Uh, all right, let's see, what do we have here? All right, this is for the steering. So we'll go there. And that will go there. So that's for the steering as well. All right have those washers. That's going to be for steering. Should 
be the next page. Uh, trying to see if I'm going to be using these. Let me just go to the next page. It'll make it easier. No, I do not see them. So those must be the motors. They just seem too long. Maybe not. No, no, it's just the motor mount is massive. That's the reason why. So stick that. No, that's perfect. It was my imagination. My imagination. All right, let's go ahead and place this one here. No, that did not work there. All right, so if that's not it, where is the one I need? I'm going to need some screws. It doesn't come with any. Well, let's do this. I still have to continue on to bag O, so it's the same bag. Uh, so let me just continue on the next one, and then the next one we'll finish bag O, and then we'll finish uh, mounting up electronics as well as the body mounts. So uh, I'll catch you on the next one.